gentlemen, to Eagle Root. Thank you so much. Clearly, when you guys are on stage, clearly you're having fun. Music is inside of you, it's coming out of you. How do you get people to get enthusiastic when you're standing up there behind a microphone and an instrument? Well, first of all, you have to understand where a beginner is coming from, I think. Because in the mindset of the beginner, they're, they're thinking about their music. You know, they have all these things in, in, in their brain. How close am I to the microphone? Uh, what is everybody else doing around me? And the last thing that they're possibly thinking of is connecting with the audience because they have all of these other things. So the first thing is to just get comfortable playing on stage because it's an incredibly different atmosphere. You know, you have the sound coming back at you, and if you're a beginner, you're normally just used to playing in your house and maybe with other people acoustically, and you, when you're on stage, it's like Mars. Yeah. It's a completely different realm, so just getting used to being up there, and then once you get to the intermediate stages, starting to be aware of what's around you, and maybe the audience, and not being afraid to look at them because they're not going to bite you. When you're actually playing a song, you're telling a story, and, and I notice, Marty, you specifically will look out, and it's like you'll focus on somebody, and you'll start to relate the story to them. For some reason, I thought, well, why don't I just try connecting with the people that are actually listening? You've got to pay attention to, to how people are reacting and what they're what they're tapping their toes to, are their heads bopping. You know, those are the ones you got to go for. There's a couple yeah. of things that you can do to help yourself with that: is mm -hmm. is play on open stages as oh, often yeah. as possible. Get in front of a foreign crowd as often mm -hmm. as possible. If you've got somebody with the, with the, uh, the, the camcorder, tape yourself yeah. and then watch it. And same with, same with uh, recording a, a rehearsal, you know, you want to listen to it and see where you can make some changes, make some adjustments. How important are energy drinks? <laughs> Very important. You guys look like typical people that would come in and watch a bluegrass band. What do you look for when you, when you come to watch a band? Their enthusiasm, that they're having fun and they're excited to be doing it. We are the little Spun Creek boys, we're glad that you're all here. But you won't get paid one thin dime unless you buy some beer. We've worked hard on our harmonies for many a long year, but we'll starve unless you buy lots of beer. The eye connection, I like to watch them, you know, just watch their face. Honey, I'm through with you, because, just because, You guys are an institution in the Midwest. It's called the Middle Spunk Creek Boys. You've been around for, what, 30, 40 years? How many years? 42. 42. You guys have got a very loyal following. How does that happen? How do you get a loyal following? Well, they're not dying off as fast as we thought they would. <laughs> okay, well, that's true. Uh, no. <laughs> I don't well, know. I, I think we appeal to people. I think that we're fun to watch. That I, I think we're an entertaining band. Okay, you know, sometimes the music's better than others. I, I'll, I'm willing to admit that. Fun to watch. How do you make something fun to watch? Uh, well, we relate to the audience. Okay. For one thing, I mean, it's, if, the, if a dog walks on, we're playing outside and the dog walks up, then we start talking about dogs. And, you know, if there's a squirrel jumping on somebody's face, then we talk about that. You know, it's just, it's sort of, it's sort of tailored to the audience, you know. Did I miss that job? I, I, yeah. Oh, okay. Tear jerker, that's a phrase kind of like toad floater, which is what we had in the last couple of days was a toad floater. Remember when there used to be all those little toads all the time that you'd see? You don't see them anymore. They're all dead, yeah. It's a, what was it, DDT or something? It was fun. What a nice thing to talk about. Anybody having that, uh, had the, having the uh, frog pizza special? It comes with the, the tree, tree frog beer, you know. Tree frog beer. It's made with preferred hop. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm interested in this fun factor thing. If it's That's fun, how we got our first job. And they had an open stage at the Scholar over in the West Bank, the Scholar Coffee House, and we went out over on a Sunday afternoon and played. And, and they didn't hire us because they thought we were any good musically, but that we were fun. We were funny and enjoyable to watch. Were you a class clown like I was? Uh, I would make remarks and get in trouble, okay. yes. How could you encourage somebody to basically find their strength? Don't be afraid of having of showing that you're having fun. Uh, I've seen some really bad bands, but they're having such a good time that I had to like them and stay and watch. 
and I've seen some really good bands that I left after two songs because uh, okay. they wouldn't admit that they enjoyed it. Yeah. I think you should be yourself. We take the music seriously, but we don't take ourselves seriously, you know. And I, th I think that's important, you know, just to have a kind of a carefree attitude about what's going on. And not, you know. You've had a loyal following for 42 years. I think that's a pretty good endorsement for the fact that what you're doing works. What will start unless you buy much oh, yeah. 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 We don't look like we're starving, Bruce. <laughs> Hey. Is that on? That's on. <laughs> Please make welcome once again Grammy nominee and three time I Award winner, Ms. Valerie Sanders. There's a lot of people that perform but really don't entertain. You are not only a great performer, you're an entertainer. What does stage presence mean to you? What I was always taught is be yourself and there's something special in everybody. You have to pretend you have this box in this front door and you have to step outside of it while you're on stage and really reach outside of yourself to people, whether it's your movement, whether it's your eyes, whether it's your hand gestures. Some people do it through dance. Some people are just like John Hartford, are fantastic instrumentalists and they can tell a story with their songs and play their instrumental and dancing at the same time. You have to find something that's natural in you and take it out of yourself and you have to decorate it, and you have to make it bigger than yourself. My energy is my strength, I think. And so I, I took that, and that's who I am, and that's what I brought out. How do you get personal with an audience? I just pretend they're in my living room. Please make welcome. On the bass back here, your very own. I bet you're proud of him, Mr. David Towson. I just treat people like they're, you know, like I love them. They come to see you and listen to your music. What an honor! And and it's a little bit egotistical to to get stage fright. You know, it's thinking of yourself. And and I think that you've got to love them more than yourself. You have to step outside your box. You have to find what's special in you. And you have to be willing to treat people like they love you and you love them. So it's not just about playing music. No, it's very philosophical. <laughs> You are a multi-instrumentalist and a vocalist, and you entertain crowds all around the world. One of the things that you do so well is you portray an energy. Did you find that on your own? Did somebody tell you about it? <laughs> How do you package that? So very, very recently, I've had absolutely debilitating stage fright, and that sounds funny because I've been doing this now at a professional level for about 10 years. Yeah. And so it's been a process. It's been a lot of Val just downright getting mad at me and saying, you know, hey, you are here for the people. You are here to entertain them. And they didn't pay to see you up there scowling because something went wrong or, or you're not, or you're scared or, you know. So I think it's, it's just been a process of coming out of my shell, becoming more comfortable with who I am as a person and as a musician. And, um, and now, you know what, though now I, I really enjoy it. Some other things though, now there have been some conscious things that I have added um, in watching other performers that I really enjoy, that, that I connect with. Um, one of them is Curly Ray Klein. Curly would do anything and everything to get a clap from the audience. And uh, he had this sort of a, kind of a possum, groundhog grin that he would do like that. And he just, and he just saw that fiddle and he'd get out there and dance into the front of the stage. And, Really, and the crowd ate it up. I thought, I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm going I'm to add that into my stage presence. Benny Martin is a fiddle player. Benny would do this thing where he would, he'd do his, his crazy stuff on the fiddle, you know. And then he would hold his fiddle out like this, like that, and then to get the audience to clap for him. And so that's something I'm sort of learning to incorporate in. So I would encourage people to consciously, when you are watching another um, performer, when you're watching another performer, to to say, you know, hey, what is it about this performer that I connect with? Is there anything in here that I can I can maybe add into my show? And you know, it's kind of paying homage to those people that you yeah, you grew up are. listening to and and, and enjoy.
I saw a piece on Russ Van Balkenberg, who passed away this year. He had commented to someone who was just getting into the music, you know, that, you know, and they wanted to perform. And he said, it doesn't matter how good you are, you know, you want to do your best, but you have to entertain. You know, you have to entertain. So that's always our goal in the band, is to get in front of an audience, whether or not they're familiar with us, whether or not they're familiar with bluegrass, but send them home with a big smile on their face. Okay. Then we've done our job. How many shows do you do a year, Art? Band does an uh, average of 125 dates. Oh my gosh. How do you keep your energy up for each and every show? Amphetamines. After a show, people say, aren't you exhausted? Because they're feeling all the energy coming from the stage. Mm -hmm. But what they don't realize is that we're getting it back tenfold. So I've just had a, what you would call a bad day. The audience, you're not trying to invite the audience into your bad day. You're trying to um, maybe uh, help them put an end to their bad day. And I remember seeing Bill Monroe years ago. I was visiting with him backstage, and you know he was so old and decrepit he could hardly move. But when he jumped onto that stage, you know he like shed 30 years yeah. and just had the energy of a young man. It comes from the audience. You know I make eye contact with the audience. Um, eye contact's an amazing thing. If you don't make eye contact with the audience. Um, you're missing out on part of the show. In 2007, due to a massive clerical error, we were voted into the Minnesota Music Hall of Fame. <laughs> and we'll take it any way we can get it. We're thrilled by that. Uh, sometimes we'll be playing in front of an audience and, and I'll think at intermission, they, they don't like us at all. <laughs> and then we'll go out there and uh, they'll say, oh, we just love your, your show and we want to buy a lot of CDs and all that. And it's like, oh, okay. so. That was just one of your more stoic Midwestern audiences, you know. <laughs> or, or you get the guy in the audience that's, you know, like this, you know. Oh, yeah. And he's just, you know, he's not going to come along no matter what you do. So then you almost need to work on him, single him out, and, and find a way to get him to loosen up. Look that person in the eye. Uh, make contact with them. Make sure they're having fun. All of a sudden things will loosen up. Well, you have to remember that you're here for them yeah. and not the other way around. My advice to anyone doing this is you've got to have fun on stage. If you're not having fun, they're not having fun. Yeah. Even though you might have done a song a hundred times, each time you do it, you have to look at it as you think the very first time. And mm -hmm. that it's, it's all about being in the moment. You have to be, be willing to show yourself. You know, um, there is a vulnerability in, in performing. And I think that's what people connect to. Laugh at yourself. You gotta laugh at yourself because if you don't laugh at yourself, um, you're coming across way too seriously. How do you know if you were successful in front of a crowd? Well, with this crew, I never have any doubts. This is just an awesome crew to work with. Damn, I'm good looking. <laughs> See, you have to be able to laugh at so yourself. Is he taking himself seriously? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Oh, you know, a little paint in the old bar never hurt anything. <laughs>